Salutations, lads and lasses. Here we are. Sadly, the MCC Insider Flight has come to a swift end. I mean, all good things have to come to an end eventually, don't they? Well, first thing I'd like to say is that I know I said I would make a separate video about each section of the flight and sum it all up with this final video. Well, after recording the content for those videos, I found that they would be extremely short and kind of pointless to make when I would be saying pretty much the same stuff in this video. So I decided to forego making those mini videos about each section of the flight and save it all for this final video. So here you go. <clears throat> now on to the actual meat of this video. I unfortunately wasn't able to put as much playtime into this flight as I had anticipated, but alas, I still put in enough time to formulate a solid opinion about the game in its current state. To be frank, I like the game, and I think, for the most part, it functions how 343 Industries anticipated it would, and how we kinda expected it would at this stage in its development. I had a lot of fun on multiplayer and firefight, and I'm sure if there were more campaign missions it wouldn't be, you know, quite as redundant as it was. However, I'm going to break this video down by the different flight offerings, kind of like how I anticipated doing them throughout the length of the flight with a video about each section, while well, I'm breaking this video down into each section. So essentially, there will be a section about campaign, multiplayer, and firefight, and of course, a conclusion, sum it all up, wrap it up section at the end. So, why don't we go ahead and talk about it, hmm? So, we're gonna talk about the campaign, but where to begin? Well, why don't I just set the stage? So essentially, there are two missions. Well, one mission, since Noble Actual is a cutscene. I mean, that's all it is. And your options are limited to difficulty and skulls. The mission that was available was Winter Contingency, which in itself is pretty fun and has quite a few Bob spawns, as well as the Bill Elite found in the first section of the level on Legendary. I made a little video messing around with the Bob and Bill Elites last week. It's kind of memey, so uh, be sure to check that out if you haven't. Um, shameless plug for myself at least. Um, anyways, that being said, I played around with the campaign on each different difficulty setting with various skulls activated, and all I can say is that it's fun and it works. I mean, the load times are lightning fast, with the game being digitally installed on SSD and all. And I didn't notice too many performance drops or issues. The performance drops and issues that I did notice weren't only found in the campaign, so I won't be talking about them quite yet. I will, however, talk about them later. I, as well as many others, absolutely love playing Halo's campaign, and Halo Reach is no exception at all. As a matter of fact, it is one of my favorite Halo campaigns because of the variety in the levels, and you know, seeing your own custom Spartan instead of like Master Chief, you know, not trashing on Master Chief, I love the guy, but I like seeing my custom Spartan as well. Um, this small taste of Halo Reach's campaign on PC has only fueled my appetite for the full game, and I really can't wait. I know I'm gonna have a lot of fun replaying this campaign for like the 9,000th time, um, except this time on PC. And um, I know there are many others out there that are looking forward to it just as much as I am. That's really all I had to say about the campaign. I mean, there's one level and not too much variety, so obviously there's not gonna be too many opinions about it. But um, this next section I'm about to dive into is an entirely different story. That is multiplayer. So here we are, multiplayer. This section of the flight was by far the most popular and the one that I have the most opinions on. Although I spent most of my time playing Firefight, I still played a fair amount of matchmaking. This time around they kind of did what I suggested they do in my last flight overview video. Every day there is a competitive offering as well as a social offering. For example, there might be 4e4 for social offering 
and invasion for competitive. Why is invasion a competitive option? I don't really know. They might have explained it at some point, you know, back when they first started flighting Halo Reach, but I don't really know, and I don't really care because to me, invasion is pretty casual. Um, I digress, however. The one thing that I didn't participate much in was 2v2. As I said in my last flight overview video, I don't care much for 2v2. It's not my thing. Alas, it was still the social offering rather than the competitive offering for any given day. That being said, I played a bit of 4v4, but I really spent most of my time on 8v8. I have always loved 8v8 or Big Team Battle, and it still remains to be my absolute favorite. There was a variety of Slayer, CTF, and other offerings for both 4v4 and 8v8 matchmaking. And um, let me just say, it was kind of a blast. Multiplayer played really well, as it did on the Xbox flight. I didn't really experience lagging or latency issues at all, most likely because dedicated servers were used exclusively for this flight, while they may not have been exclusively used for the Xbox flight. Again, I have no confirmation about any of that, but that's just from my experience. That's kind of how it feels. They were definitely used this time, for sure. And they even confirmed that they were used this time in one of their updates. But that's neither here nor there. There were, however, instances of either my team or the enemy team being short one or more players when the game launched. I am unsure if this was due to someone dodging, lagging out, or if it was an issue with the game. But nonetheless, it still happened, and it got kind of annoying. As a matter of fact, the sniper's gameplay you're periodically seeing in the background all started with the enemy team lacking a player, and more people, of course, backed out from there on out. At the end of the day, though, I really enjoyed some good old Reach multiplayer, both 4v4 and 8v8, and Infection. At the end of... The first week, 343 Industries announced that the flight would be extended by what ended up being two weeks for further testing of some patches and fixes they had developed in light of community feedback and reports. Prior to the patch, the community had complained about input delay, progression, server issues, the chat filter, so on and so forth. And this patch aimed to implement fixes that would address these issues. The patch that dropped for the MCC Insider changed quite a few things with the build and affected players in a variety of aspects. Some glaring changes that were made after this patch were the halting of XP progression and the removal of the variable frame rate or unlimited FPS option in the settings. 343 Industries found that playing on frame rates above 60 FPS was potentially responsible for the increased mouse input delay that players were facing. So for this patch, they decided to remove the option to play at a frame rate higher than 60 FPS. They did confirm in their blog post that this was not the permanent solution, of course, um, but was necessary for testing. The chat filter was a hot button topic for discussing amongst the fan base and garnered opinions both pro and against the filter. 343 Industries ultimately decided to remove the chat filter altogether for the time being. However, this isn't the long-term solution, which is still unknown as of now. Progression in this flight, um, as apparent from 343 Industries' own data recordings, shows signs that it needs to be tweaked. 343 Industries didn't go much into detail regarding the data that they had collected, but nonetheless, the XP granting um, was disabled for the remainder of the flight, so no one could rank up anymore, essentially, um, towards the end of the flight. My experience playing before, which I mentioned above, and after this patch was a little bit different. I mean, the main thing I obviously noticed was the different feel from the removal of the variable frame rate. The 60 FPS cap was very easy to get used to, I'm not complaining about it. But uh, apart from that, the game played about the same for me. I mentioned before that I personally didn't really notice mouse input delays, so I personally felt no real difference there. Emphasis on personally. I mean, I used it twice. Very close together. That's all just my experience. But um, I am sure that those who experienced it are giving their opinions on it just as I am. And that pretty much sums up what I have to say regarding the multiplayer, both pre and post-patch. 
course, it's all very summed up. It's not, I didn't go into super detail, but that is the bulk of it. Basically, it's fun, and the rest of you out there will get your hands on it sooner than we initially thought. We'll touch on that at the end, even though everybody who doesn't live under a rock knows the harsh reality, the truth, by now. Let's talk about Firefight, by the way. And now we are at Firefight. This is by far the portion of the Insider I spent the most time on, and it's simply because it's just that much fun. The Firefight offerings for the Master Chief Collection Insider were split between Arcade and Limited. Arcade is the fun game modes where you have overshields, unlimited ammo, power weapons on start, all that good stuff. Game modes like Fist Fight, where you only have swords and hammers, are a staple of this arcade version. This version of Firefight was the most fun by far, obviously, but it got really redundant really quick. However, you do get a ton of experience for playing it, which is irrelevant at the end of which sorry was irrelevant at the end of the flight whenever they disabled XP granting it altogether. But that being said, the other offering for Firefight was Limited, which is a much more traditional Firefight offering. This version was complete with limited ammo, loadout weapons, and a finite number of lives available with power weapon drops coming in as ordnance on the map. This mode is probably the most refreshing, as it was more than just waiting for the enemies to spawn slash jump from the dropship and killing them immediately. The available maps for Firefight were Corvette, Beachhead, and Holdout. And as I stated before, you got a lot of experience from playing Firefight, and it was a nice break from the semi to full-on sweat fest that was PvP matchmaking in the Insider. PvP Firefight was not available in this flight, but was available in a previous flight, so that's cool also, you know, whatever. Firefight was also available in custom games, with all of the same customization options that were available in the 360 version of Reach. The only complaint I had was probably because of the fact that this is a beta build of the game. Let me elaborate. When setting up a custom Firefight match, you can't save game variants, which is fine and expected. However, after you set up your game, launched it, played as long as you wanted to play, or until the game ended, and then quit, the game would reset the firefight settings once you, were, once you quit and were taken back to the custom game menu. So if you edited the settings, launched the game, and immediately quit, the game would reset the settings to default automatically. This was kind of annoying because I often played for a bit and decided I wanted to change one thing, but had to go through and completely change all of the very in-depth settings every single time I quit the game to change something. But like I said, that is because this is a beta build of the game. So it's not really a big deal to me. It's just something I noticed that's specific to this flight. All in all, Firefight was fun as hell, and I know I'm going to spend a very good amount of time on it when it comes to the retail, retail build of the game. Which is very soon. So let's cut to the conclusion, shall we? Overall, I had a lot of fun and am very happy and grateful that I was invited to participate in not only this flight, but the previous flight for Halo Reach. Thank you. This flight was extended from its previous one week span to, I believe, three weeks. And man, did that only amplify the fun. Many in the community were adamant that this was the last flight for Halo Reach before it was sent off for final polishing and the eventual emergence. Well, since XO19 and Microsoft's announcement that Halo Reach will be available on MCC on both Xbox and PC on December 3rd, I guess we could say that this hunch the community had was right all along. Yep. The issue I mentioned all the way back in the campaign section, you know the one I said I would talk about later. Well, it has to do with unsteady frame rate and input delay. As we all know, the minimum and recommended specs for Reach have been unveiled by 343 Industries. And not to brag, 
but my computer far exceeds even the recommended specs. But alas, I still have an unsteady frame rate. Weird. Not many people have been complaining about frame rate as they have about input delay. Maybe I don't have the right settings going or I just expect way too much from the beta build. But nonetheless, it is still there. I do believe that once the game comes to retail, it will hopefully be polished a bit more and maybe this frame rate issue will be dealt with. As I don't want to have to cap my frame rate at 60 FPS just to have a semi-consistent frame rate. I want to take advantage of my higher frame rate capabilities as would anyone. I also noticed that even though the requirements for the game are pretty low to mid-tier oriented I would say, the game was still sucking resources which could potentially explain the frame rate inconsistencies, the ones I mentioned earlier. But, you know, who knows? I assume there was a lot of extra processes running that 343 Industries had to monitor such tests that were making the game so resource heavy. I have no real idea as to why the game was so resource heavy, but I'm just going to talk about to the game being a beta build that isn't polished yet. The last issue was input delay. And, as I said before, I personally didn't notice the input delay nearly as much as some other people in the community did. It wasn't really a problem for me, like at all. Then again, I'm not very good, I'm still trying to get back into PC gaming, and I don't play in a competitive capacity. So it wasn't as obvious to me as it probably would have been to someone who plays in a different style than I do. Then again, the settings I chose could have coincidentally been the ones that limited input delay the most on the pre-patch build. Who knows? I don't. I certainly don't. I'm not, I am not going to say that the input delay isn't there or that it wasn't bad, because it very well could have been. I just personally didn't notice it. I am sure those who experienced it voiced their opinions pre- and post-patch, so there's that. I assume that in the final polishing of the game phase that this as well as the frame rate slash resource usage of the game will be addressed. I really did enjoy this flight and with that being said I'm very excited to see how Reach plays once it's polished and merged into the repo, repail, retail build of the game. Those of you who didn't get a chance to participate in this flight or in any other flight as a matter of fact are in for a real treat when your time to participate slash play Reach on Retail MCC comes, which, as we saw from XO19, will be on December 3rd, 2019. I can't wait to see what's to come regarding the Insider after Reach's debut on MCC. And all we can do is really wait and see. Anyways, I just wanted to say one more time that I am very thankful and very grateful to be an Insider and to have had the opportunity to play in the last two Halo Reach flights. I mean, that's really just amazing. I just, I'm just so happy. I know they let a lot of people in and it doesn't make me special, but you know, I thought it was cool nonetheless. Um, that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. And if you did, not only leave a like and subscribe, but I would also urge you to follow me on Twitter. I am far more active on Twitter and will be often tweeting and interacting with the community on there far more frequently than I will be uploading videos. That's just how it goes, you know, videos take a lot more time than typing out a tweet, so that's why that is. I shouldn't have to explain that, but I thought I would because I am nice. That being said, I hope to see you all on Halo Reach on December 3rd, whether you're playing on MS Store or Steam, or you know, I might even hop on Xbox Halo Reach to play with the Xbox people too. We'll just see. Um, I also hope to see you all on the next video. Later.